Hi, I'm Kendra Winchester. Welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing the first of three wrap ups for November. Apparently, I just decided to kick it in gear and try to make my goal for the year. And I've read about, I don't know, 15 books so far this year. And I'm going to finish two today. I don't know what's going on, but I'm, I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain. So I've decided to split up the wrap ups into three parts. So I'll have this, this first part, which is fiction, and I think like one poetry book. The second part will be the nonfiction books for nonfiction November, and the last part will be um, the other regular wrap up. So there we go. So I actually have to start though with a book that was from last month, because as we know, I always say I have to do the digital ones or I forget them. Um, and I did. That's what I get for not doing those first. So the first book I'm going to talk about is A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. This is the last book in her Darker Shade of Magic series and I can't really tell you much about this book because it will be full of spoilers but basically the premise is that there are several different Londons. There's like a red London, a gray London, a black London, and a white London. There's like all kinds of different magic systems and stuff like this and Samuel and I have actually been reading these um, somewhat together. I think if we read them within the same year it counts as reading them together because we read so few books that are the same. I enjoyed this book more than the other books. The other books, I guess, if you want to use star ratings, were like three stars for me. They were good, but I really struggled with her plot. And I've seen her talk about uh, her writing, and she says she struggles with plot the most. And I think you can definitely tell that. But her characters are great. Her world building is great. But sometimes stuff will happen, and I'm like, why on earth did this happen? Like, this is obviously just a device. Like, I shouldn't be able to see the strings of the puppet, you know, moving around. And I feel like, though... Like, she's so good at world building, I'm, I'm still gonna read stuff that she writes, but I just struggle because there's such a differing level of skill in the different areas of, of book writing, and I don't know. But I, I did enjoy this last one more than the other two, so I definitely will be picking up more in this series. So speaking of digital books, I read The Humans by Matt Haig for one of the book clubs I'm in, and this is a book about an alien who comes to Earth and inhabits the body of a dude that they killed, and he's from like light years away and way ahead of the civilization, and he comes down and he begins to observe humans. And the joy of this book is that because he's an alien and completely and totally like clueless about humans he makes such interesting observations about humans and what it means to be human and why you know it's okay he like he's immortal and he doesn't understand why humans live the way they do and he thinks like they're kind of pointless because they die so quickly and all those things and I just really enjoyed that perspective of this book. It's such a fascinating book and the way that Matt Hag is able to look at different things about humanity and just make that kind of commentary I found really interesting. And yeah, I don't know, it was a fun read. It was a fun read and I had been reading a lot of heavy stuff and this was just light and enjoyable and I laughed out loud so many times. Uh, so the next book actually is a book of poetry and that is Bestiary by Donica Kelly and this is out from Grey Wolf Press. And I really love Grey Wolf Press. They are an indie publisher of pretty fairly well renowned um, and they have great poetry. And this is about, this entire poetry collection is about Donica Kelly's, I guess, growing up kind of deal. Um, she's an African American woman who is trying to make sense of the world and also trying to make sense of some abuse in her childhood and different things or at least you know the narrator is and you can tell there's some direct relation so I don't want to say what's true of the author and what's not because obviously it's poetry so who knows who knows but I really thought that she did such a great job with it and I really enjoyed the, the poetry so I definitely will be picking up more of what she writes but um, what's interesting, I think, about hers is that she has this one poem I'm going to show you here in a second. It's called How to Be Alone, and it's this, these empty spaces, and it's kind of like the paragraphics paragraphs themselves are isolated and so as she's going through that there's just all this empty space and there's this poor lonely like isolated paragraph and she just used stuff like that throughout the entire collection and the bestiary part is like she'll take a creature at, as like the heading as the title and then she'll like write a poem that relates to that and I thought that was really well done throughout the entire collection. It wasn't overdone, like it wasn't over themed, but they were all coherent and they all went together. So I really enjoyed um, this poetry collection. Next up is an arc I have from Algonquin and that is An American Marriage uh, by Terry Jones and this is um, coming out on February 6th. 
2018. And this book is about um, a African-American couple and they are doing, I think they're like spending the night in this little hotel for their anniversary or some such thing. And what happens is that he is accused of rape and wrongly put in prison. And so he's there for several years. And it's this whole idea of waiting. And it's the, really a, an intense look at a marriage, not just the marriage itself, but how they came to be married. And then during the marriage and then after the marriage. And like, it would she will she wait for him if she doesn't wait for him was there something wrong with the marriage in the first place and if she will wait for him is it really worth her waiting for him and there's all of these questions and I didn't really expect to fly through this book like I did I started reading and I looked up and it was two hours later and 90 pages later and all this stuff was happening and I really appreciated the way that Terry Jones like she writes the novel in chapters and then there's while he's in prison it's all letters because that's the only way obviously they can communicate and then it goes back to the you know, regular novel format I really enjoyed that and I really enjoyed her really intense look at the characters like on a sentence level like it's fine it's not like I feel like on a sentence level it doesn't keep up with her like really zoomed in look at this marriage and she's really great at picking apart the marriage and looking at it that way I thought that was really interesting um, so and I found this really compelling so any faults that I found with the book I felt like were fairly well balanced with the things that I really liked about the book so I definitely think it's worth a shot and just I love books about marriages not just like getting together which seems to be the trend but like the marriage itself and will they stay together will they not stay together and why or why not that is so definitely check out An American Marriage by Terry Jones. The next two books that I read were um here we go first one um Every Heart of Dore by Shauna McGuire and also Down Among the Stacks and Bones these are two novellas uh, about children who go off into different worlds like Chronicles of Nardia kind of deal where they go off into this little gate like door door you know our doorway uh, and they like walk through and like her world building is fantastic like I didn't find the writing itself that great and some of the characters I felt were more stereotypical but what's magical about this uh, these books both of these books is about like how she's created this world and how fascinating this world is if the books were longer I don't think I would have enjoyed them as much just because the flaws that are there with the writing and some of the characterization um, would be kind of annoying but because they're so short I just really enjoyed the world that she's made and this one is actually about two characters from the first book and the world that they wander into and their story specifically and then there's a third novella coming out so, I mean people really love these and I do think they're quite fascinating um, but yeah I don't think I'm quite like jumping on the bandwagon but I'm definitely gonna be reading the third one when it comes out just because these are fun and they are a great way to break up a really intense like reading schedule when you just need something short and fast and lighthearted like these are actually really dark and intense but they're not like as intense as you know say evicted you know by Matthew Desmond which is about you know the poverty and low income housing kind of thing they're not that kind of intense they're just kind of dark if that makes sense that makes sense okay I'm glad you understand me and my like stream of consciousness ramblings guys that's it's really encouraging and helpful uh, I, speaking of stream of consciousness the last book I have to talk to you about is probably uh, I would say oddly enough my favorite read so far of the month and that is Ali Smith the accidental all the tabs so I was reading this over with Russell over at Inker paper blog and he was such a gracious soul because I started reading this and I got so excited about this book a lot of books I enjoy but they don't have a ton of depth to them. They could probably stand a few rereadings, but like nothing like this book. Obviously, I love Ally Smith because she's like Virginia Woolf. And so once I Googled Virginia Woolf and Ally Smith, all this stuff came up. Ally Smith has actually lectured about Virginia Woolf, and I realized that a lot of the themes that she writes about come from Woolf novels. So, for example, How to Be Both, you could argue that that's the same themes as Orlando, just totally rewritten. Um, and it even has the same themes of time. Uh, and then you could say this one has themes of To the Lighthouse, and it's just rewritten. And then the style is so similar to Virginia Woolf, I feel like you can definitely tell that, like, Ally Smith is like Virginia Woolf's like heir apparent uh, kind of deal like she is 
the direct descendant of Virginia Woolf kind of deal. Like, I absolutely adore her style and what she writes about. Now, on this book, on a, this book on a book level, there are parts that I don't like. So, like, for example, um, the entire book is written from the perspective of this family. So you have the dad, the stepdad, the mom, um, the little the girl who's like 12, and then the teenage boy. And they repeat in the same order three times. And then in between those and on the ends is Amber. And Amber actually one day walks into the family's life while they're on vacation and she kind of disrupts everything about their life. And they're kind of forced to reveal all of the bad things about their family dynamics, all of the unhealthy things, you might say. And they kind of explodes all of that. And then they kind of have to pick up the family and just basically face the repercussions of unearthing all of these true feelings that people have been repressing for so long. So like that is really well done, but I don't think the interludes with Amber really work for me because they're all about film and stuff. Um, but ultimately, I really enjoyed this book. The more I think about it, the more I like it. And yes, it's confusing, but I think part of that is just because Ellie Smith is so smart and I'm not as smart as Ellie Smith. And, but also, like, I can research the crap out of this book and still find more. I could probably read papers about this book and still find more. And that's something that I've always loved about Virginia Woolf. And that's something that I love about good literature is that you can study it, you could write papers on it, you can write, it can withstand the weight of hundreds of papers written about it. And I don't know, like, if it's gotten to that point yet, but you understand, like, you should be able to peek into every crevice about this book and still find something new. And that, I think, is what Ellie Smith has. So even though it's not my favorite Ellie Smith, and, like, there are some things that just don't work as well. I think she's fixed those problems in her writing later in later novels. But also, when we talk about a novel like Ali Smith not being as great as some other ones, she still has, like, a novelist is way up here when the average novelist is, like, down here. So, you know. I'm gonna stop talking about Ali Smith. <laughs> just, <laughs> and spare you all. Um, but, yeah, I, many thanks to Russell uh, for... Uh, listening to all of my ramblings about this book and continuous gushing about this book. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to read uh, this book with him. He had a lot of great insights about how Ali writes about themes in different books and how like her style is and how she approaches books themselves and that was really great. So thank you very much for Russell for reading this with me. I greatly appreciate it. And oddly enough, both of my buddy reads that I have ever done have been Ali Smith. I read uh, How to Be Both over uh, with Doris um, over all the books and so I don't know. I feel like this is a trend. So that was enough gushing for one day. Uh, if you've read any of these books and have feelings about them, please let me know. I am happy to read them. And we can have a lovely discussion in the comments. So if you want to check out all of these books, they are down in the description box below. Um, definitely check those out. Uh, there's just so many good ones down there. So that is all for me, and I will be back later with probably my nonfiction wrap-up. So I guess I'll see you then. <laughs>